Hello and welcome to The View's Kitchen. On today's recipe, friends, I'm gonna be making caldo de pollo de rancho, which translates to a country-style chicken soup. Uh, this recipe is super easy to make and I don't want you to feel too intimidated. All you need is your chicken and whatever veggies you have on hand. There's only a few ingredients that you might not have and that's gonna be a whole chicken because I'm gonna be cutting a whole chicken head and everything. So if you guys get, you know, a little queasy in your stomach about those things, make sure to skip ahead. Um, but definitely make sure to look at the rest of the recipe because you guys need some chicken soup. I mean, whether you're sick, you're under the weather, and it's traditional in our in our culture to eat soup every week, even if it's 110 degrees outside, okay? <laughs> so don't shy away, and let's get started by chopping up this chicken. I'm gonna begin by removing this little fat pocket from the rear area. You just kinda wanna come in at a little triangle and remove it. Next, we're gonna come in and we're gonna get in through the through the neck. Same thing, little triangle area. And you do need to have a sharp knife. This is uh, Aladdin Ultra Source. We got it on Amazon. You guys can follow the link in the Amazon storefront. Cloud does a really good job there. Thank you for cheering her on. Woo -woo. Woo. <laughs> See, that wasn't so bad, friends. Thank your chicken for all its service. You see this little fat part? Just come in. It'll tell you what to do. Okay? Now instead of pulling it open and making it do the splits, you don't wanna do that. Just bring it in and it's gonna make it easier for you to crack that. You see that? And you can see, sometimes, depending on your chicken, when you push the leg up and twist it over, let me try that again. We're gonna do it twice, okay? I'll make sure you guys see it on the other one. Push it up bring it up okay and then it'll help you pop you guys heard the pop and all you want to do is cut through there because it cuts right through that tendon okay sorry i have a lot of fun in the, in the kitchen <laughs> so again lift it up you see how it just cuts through the skin push it up And now from here, you kind of have to figure out if you want to the whole breast or however you want to cut the carcass, right? So I think I'm going to go this way. So that way I'm guaranteed a whole big breast like this piece for those that love just the breast. Let me get, let me get through this wing over here. So we have the wing here. So you can start, you can kind of feel it right here. And for some reason, I'm not, I'm really not the best at cutting the wings. But you have to feel for that, that little joint in between that tendon to where you slice through. And that's your favorite part of the chicken, isn't it? The yeah, and I'm trying to cut just the wing out on its own because my mom loves the wing, mm -hmm. just like that. I don't know if you guys, you guys weren't able to see it through the outside, but let's come right here. You can feel it. And I wanna make sure that I cut it to where you guys can see it when you're doing it at home because if you have a whole chicken and you wanna save your chicken wings every time you have a whole chicken, you can. See if I can get through it. Here, I just wanna make sure I get a good visual for you guys. Okay, there we go, I made it through the wings. I'm Like I said, I'm not the best at cutting the wings, but I get by, so if I can do it, guess what? You guys can do it. <laughs> So now I have that little piece of the breast over here in the chicken, move them to the side. I mean, you can definitely put the whole chicken in there, just like that. It just depends on how you wanna serve it and how you wanna cut your chicken. And we like to split ours. So now I'm just gonna keep these pieces whole and these are gonna be mostly for the adults. And then it just depends on how you wanna serve it. And you know, if you can cut the chicken breast more from here if you want, you see that? And you can just keep that through the bone. But 
I think this is enough to the way that I want to serve it. I just need to get through these little legs a little bit here. Enjoy. Hope I didn't go too fast. You just got to fill in between the joint right here. You guys can see that I maybe I should cut it so you guys can see it a little bit better what I'm trying to show because it's easy to just say it because you can feel it but I want you guys to be able to look at it you see that's where the joints meet and you want to cut in between that Okay, you see the joint is stuck there and we sliced it right in between. And it just slices like you're slicing an apple that you shouldn't be struggling. If you're struggling to get uh, through it, it's because you didn't hit it right in the middle. So that's why you have to feel for it. And usually you can feel it from this little part right there on where you wanna go. Okay, you guys with me? We're with you. All right, next let's go to over the rest of our ingredients. Make sure to wash your hands and clean up. These are the fruit and veggies that we're gonna be using. We have potatoes, corn, carrots, zucchini, cilantro, Anaheim pepper, and tomato. White onion, garlic, salt, ground cumin, and oregano. Now it's time to bring that water to a boil. Our water's almost at a boil and you wanna add your chicken pieces, okay? Even if you didn't add a whole chicken and you're using thighs, we wanna go ahead and bring this up to a good boil for about 10, 15 minutes. And once we get that good boil, we're gonna come and skim all the impurities from, from, the, um, from the caldo, okay? From the soup. We want max flavor in here. Okay, friends, while it comes to a boil, let's start chopping our vegetables. I'm just gonna quickly slice the vegetables on how I like to have them for this particular caldo. You can remove the peel. Although for some recipes, like if I'm using red broth, I just throw it in there. <laughs> Especially if my mother's around. She just likes to do it that way and I like to, you know, impress her. And all I like to do is give it a little X, set it to the side. I said you did the, an X for the four directions. Yes, an X for the four directions. Okay, now we're gonna do our chile. And all you wanna do with your chile, because this is for flavor, remove the seeds. But I'll tell you, the Anaheim is my favorite part of the soup. If you don't have Anaheim, not to worry. Um, we've made it with a green bell pepper and it works great. So you like the broth and the Anaheim and I like the broth and the garlic. Oh, you do? <laughs> it's a good combination. It is. Okay. Set our veggies to the side. For the tomato, just slice it in half. Chop your ends. Careful when you're slicing down the middle, okay? It can get slippery on you. Careful with your nuggets. Yeah, so I just go straight to the tip right here. And I really don't try to be perfect when I chop. I think that each vegetable is telling you what to do, so it would kind of be ridiculous for me to be like, make sure it's, <laughs> you know, perfect. So you want to chop them as big as your family would like. Because these little ones help the kids, the bigger ones for the adults. And you have to make it what? Say it in the comments. Do you know, Cloud? I was about to say it, but then you said say it in the comments. Say it, girl. Make it comfortable for your home. Ooh, I like how that sounds. I would love for you to read me a story. I would right. love to. <laughs> All right, next. And for the carrots, I like to cut them at an angle. A nice thick one. Just about like that. But for those of you that like the big round carrots go for it 
You guys know my mom will have it with me if I do that to her. <laughs> Mama Beans does not like to run carrots. She does not. And what Mama Grandma views, because I say Grandma, <laughs> what Grandma views wants, Grandma gets. Yes. Take care of your elders, everybody. They've already done the work for you. That's right. It's it's an upgrade name, right? It's like a title change, like an elder. Like it used to be Mom views, and now it's Grandma views. Yep. It's just about however you want to cut your carrots. And for the corn, we like to keep them small. For those of you that watch on uh, Meatless Mondays, I have something special coming very soon for you. Might not be next week, but the following one, but I got something special for you. I know, could I have done this a little bit cleaner? Probably, but I like having fun in my kitchen. And I hope you do too. Okay, peel the potatoes. And I know you all say to peel that way, but for me it's easier. That's how I peel, away from me. Away? Mm -hmm. Let us know how you peel in the comments. It's just easier for me to groove it. Mm -hmm. If it's just me, I add the skin, but if it's the kids, I take the skin off because you know how kids can be sometimes, they're a little fussy. And for those of you that see the little uh, brown spots, it's just oxidation. Don't be, don't be picky that way, okay? Get through it, use your potato. I'm not scolding you, just a recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that because I used to be such a brat when I was younger and my mom would cook, I'd be like, ew, mom. I'd be like, esta podrida. Like it's spoiled and she's like, no, it's not. You're gonna eat it. <laughs> and if you didn't eat it, I would say drop it on my plate when she turns around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cloud was always very helpful during my selective eating when I was younger. Uh -huh. Thanks, sis. You're welcome. And that's how you build sisterly and sibling bonds. You have to have each other's back no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> we would trade at the table because there's things that you would give me that, you, that, um, that I enjoyed also and back and forth. Same thing with your potatoes. Oh, just a little carrot on there. Same thing with your potatoes, just chop them down the middle and make them about the size that your family needs. I know that everybody loves a good chunky papa. And look at what your potatoes telling you to do, you know? I thought you were calling me a chunky papa. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I want to be a chunky papa. So I kind of have an idea of who I'm going to be serving and who likes what vegetable. So that's, that's how I pick and choose when I'm in that pot. Like for my bebe, my little ones, I'll pick these little ones. Um, and then my older son's very selective about potatoes on a particular day, so. Boom, done. Let's go skim that broth. Careful with that steam when you open up your uh, pot, okay? When you lift that lid, I don't want you burning yourself. Now, ooh, that's for a natural chicken? Wow. That's hardly any impurities. I usually get way more. I'm impressed. Thank you, chicken. I don't know, friends. I think our chicken's excited that we're almost at 500K. Thank you guys so much. And I wanted to show up for you guys and give you the purest chicken for your soul. <laughs> Do you remember reading those, those books? Yes. But I have my opinions, so I don't want to. I don't want to voice them. Okay. <laughs> well, it's because I had a teacher in third grade that every time that I would question her teaching, she would have me sit in the corner and read those books, and I just learned to hate them. <laughs> you know, when I had a stressful day uh, in in school, uh, growing up, and during lunchtime, I didn't want to hang out with anybody. I would go into the library and I would just read that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was sure really good fun. about isolating myself <laughs> from the chaos. Yeah. So. You always have been. All right. That looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Yeah? I think we're good. Let's continue. Now it's time to add our wonderful ingredients that are going to season this broth and give flavor to that chicken. Add your onion, your whole garlic, ground cumin, and your salt. Friends, I am using Himalayan uh, pink salt, so make sure you adjust if you're using regular uh, table salt 
to your liking, I would start off with half a tablespoon and then after it boils you can taste it because you can always add but you can't take it out. Your Anaheim's tomato. We're going to allow this to boil for another 30 minutes, okay? So hang tight as we get through the recipe. <laughs> if you need a full detailed recipe for how to make tortillas, I'll link it in the description area. Just a little quick, showing you guys what I'm going to pair this caldo with. Make sure that if you're using a comal, your little cast iron, that if you're flipping with your hands, you don't wash your hands for at least an hour and a half to two after, um, you can get really injured that way. So just use your spatula. You're still Mexican and you're still a human. Good job, guys. <laughs> Not to mention that this comal is super ancient and if you see the same uh, material, material that it's made with, it's almost the same as the stove. So it is lava hot it really is this it's is, not a pan no it's not uh this belonged to uh our great grandmother and we're still blessed that it that it works the only difference that we had altered to this uh mm -hmm. is the handle yeah the handle was added by our mother mm -hmm. i don't know what i'm gonna add maybe i don't know nothing it's perfect <laughs> we're not we're gonna have a family meeting <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to talk about this guys <laughs> it's been 30 minutes careful with that steam friends because it is hot lava. Add your potatoes, your carrots and your corn. Woo, party. Once you add your veggies, we're gonna continue to boil this for another 10 minutes, okay? So put a lid on it in a nice way. Careful with the steam. Now we're gonna add our zucchinis and our cilantro. Right after you add your zucchinis, you wanna uh, break down your oregano in your hand and I'm using Mexican oregano. It's a huge difference At least to me it is but if you don't have it make it comfortable for your home A lot of healing properties in oregano. I learned that from you. Yes, ma'am. There is we're gonna continue to cook this for another uh, Five minutes. I'm gonna place the lid on it and I'll see you shortly. Now it's time to turn off your burner and we're gonna add, you can add one or two ice cubes and then place your lid on it until you're ready to serve, okay? If you guys wanna know why I do that, make sure to stick around at the end for the tasting. For those of you that wanna learn how to make uh, Instant Pot Perfect Rice like Cloud does. Cloud made this for us. Uh, make sure to look at the ground beef and egg recipe that you all loved. Uh, we show you in there how to do it. Okay, get some rice. I'm gonna take two pieces of corn for this and my zucchinis and this makes it a lot easier for you to come in here and pick uh, the things that you want I do want that tomatito it's like it's like sushi <laughs> it feels like sushi take your carrots the star of the show that delicious pollito look at that yummy and the potatoes are the ones that always go to the bottom girl they really do. You might need your spoon for that one. I'm gonna need my spoon. There, I found my chili. And a potato. Ooh, careful. No se me quemen. You know this pouring the broth is my favorite part 
of making the caldo, although I normally cannot handle pouring sounds, but for the broth <laughs> I can. Isn't that insane? Isn't that a common um, kind of issue that people don't like the pouring sounds? I don't know. Let us know, guys. <laughs> I, I thought that was just me, but... I love it. I love to hear pouring, especially if it's like rain or water. Broth. It's a pouring from a pitcher. Oh, sometimes. I gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten better, I think, here on the channel since I edit, so it's, it's gotten a lot better. All Amazing. right, we're ready, friends. Speeding up. I'm going to show you what I like to pair my caldo with. I like to add a little bit of lime or lemon juice to my tortilla, just like this. And you can use store-bought corn tortillas or freshly made. It'll work just fine. And I sprinkle some salt on the top. Okay, now let me adjust my hair for our taste test, but I have to dig into this rice real quick because you guys know I've been addicted to rice. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. And I hope that this chicken soup helps you feel nice and warm and loved because that's exactly how Cloud and I feel uh, being here with you guys. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! You guys know I've been addicted to rice. All your life? Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do I look ready to dig in? You do. You ready for a taste? I'm gonna have you taste the broth. And I'm gonna tell you something, for those of you that have selective eaters, there are so many nutrients in this broth that even if they don't eat the veggies or the chicken and can't, can't do it, you can even give them a few corn chips on the side and have them say, ah, uh, while they enjoy the broth. Uh. Oh, you said, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is very hot. Be very, very careful. Do you add shoot the penis to your caldo? It depends on my mood. Today, I'm not feeling too much for it. I, I just want to enjoy the natural, clear broth. Did you guys see how clear this broth is? It is. It's amazing. I'm the same. I'll, um, it depends. I have to be in a good, spicy. Let me show you how clear that broth is. It's light, and it has a subtle, like, it didn't have that much fat, the chicken that I used, but I like that buttery flavor from it. Let me set this down because I did um, mention that I was gonna let you know what you do with the with the ice. So what happens with the ice, my mom has done this ever since I can remember and her great grandmother that taught her how to cook has been doing it since she can remember as well. So what happens if you think of an iceberg, you see how there's layers of frozen ice. So what happens is that, that cold frozen ice that melts on the top kind of keeps all that flavor in the broth. It keeps it to stay in and it seals it. So it's kind of like sealing it. That'll work. So get your tortilla, get a little piece of your chicken, and you just gotta let it happen naturally. Mm. For my tortilla, I can get the subtle flavor of the, of the lime or the lemon and you can still enjoy your broth for what it's supposed to be. Thank you for honoring our mother's recipe, it's perfect. Yes, I did honor it, but I do add my portions of oregano because it's really, really uh, healthy for you. It's good, if you're gonna have soup, might as well nurture your, your body, you know? And there's a lot of um, benefits from oregano and mixed with the chicken soup. You guys are gonna see how strong you feel after. So even if you don't have the veggies and you have the chicken, I definitely recommend following all the uh, directions and boiling your chicken and allowing those flavors to come through. As soon as I started tasting this, I'm like, I know I'm gonna need a nap. So make sure you serve it for dinner. It's time for me, it's time for me to leave. <laughs> all right, friends. My caldo's gonna get cold and I need to, I need to get in here. Bye guys, we love you. Que rico. <laughs>